We are healthcare experts who have been following the coronavirus outbreak globally. Ask us anything about COVID-19. Hi Reddit. Here's who we have answering questions about COVID-19 today. Dr. Eric Rubin is editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine, associate physician specializing in infectious disease at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and runs research projects in the immunology and infectious diseases departments at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Nancy Lappard is editor-in-charge for Reuters Health. Christine Soares is medical news editor at Reuters. Hazel Baker is head of UGC at Reuters News Agency, currently overseeing our social media fact-checking initiative. Please note that we are unable to answer individual medical questions. Please reach out to your healthcare provider for with any personal health concerns. Are you concerned about contracting coronavirus yourself? How safe do hospital workers feel caring for the patients? Am I worried myself? Yes. But I'm a doctor and patients need care, that's part of the job. Eric. What percentage of the population do you think will eventually catch COVID-19? Most epidemic modeling suggests that up to a third of the population may be infected in a first pandemic wave with no interventions, so it all depends on human actions. Christine. Do I need to sanitize food packages or mail parcels that I get from the delivery guy? How long does the virus stay on surfaces? To your first question, we don't know how much of a risk these represent. Yes, the virus can persist on surfaces, but epidemiologic observations don't really suggest that these are important sources of infection if you're concerned. There are several online sources recommending how to do safe disinfection for what it's worth. I don't bother, but the rest of my family does. Eric. What do you think of the low case count in a densely populated country like India? The low case count in a densely populated country may reflect a lack of testing for the virus, rather than a lack of infected people. Nancy. What techniques are you applying on your personal lives to keep you going during these tough times? Another technique, use your non-dominant hand to open doors, take groceries off shelves in stores, etc. because you are less likely to touch your face with that non-dominant hand. Nancy. Cries an ambidextrous. Yoga. Spring cleaning. I bet homes in lockdown cities have never been as clean as they are now. Christine. You are drastically underestimating my laziness. My husband and I are self-isolating. Avoiding supermarkets. Washing hands frequently. Trying to get fresh air at least once a day. Nancy. If you were to show symptoms of the virus, what is the best protocol to seek medical treatment without putting anyone else, including healthcare workers, at risk of exposure? Increasingly, areas with a lot of disease are setting up drive through testing centers. There's one in my suburb where people can be tested without getting out of the car. If you have access to one of these it would be ideal of course. It all depends on the availability of testing that will improve, but still might be constrained where you are. Eric. Can COVID-19 become more potent as it makes its way around, or does it remain static? Any virus can evolve over time and it's most typical for them to become weaker cause less severe disease. The new SARS-CoV-2 virus is so far very stable, so there is no concern that it will become more virulent than it already is. Christine. Hi once you have a COVID-19 can you get it again? We are not sure how immunity works or how long it lasts. The best guess is that people who are infected are likely to be protected over the short to medium term. We don't know about longer. Eric. It's refreshing to hear an honest we don't know, rather than spouting conjecture and assumptions. Thanks for all you're doing. Is it safe to go out and run slash cycle slash workout without a mask, no contact with others? We also got this question during a separate chat. Here's what Dr. Isaac Bogoch, an infectious disease researcher and scientist, had to say, oh yeah, most provincial or state guidelines suggest it is just fine, just space it out, and no crowds. What are the chances that we are good to go after another month or so? Should we be afraid that it will come back like the Spanish flu? It's not likely to be gone in a month and there is a suggestion that, if we are able to control disease, it will continue at a low level or perhaps even come back as a full-blown epidemic again in the fall, until we have good interventions or a good part of the population gets infected, it's likely to be with us. Eric. Is it possible the virus has been circulating, that is, 
community spread in areas currently being impacted, New York, LA Spain, as early as December, while it's possible that the virus has been around for a while in places outside of China, it seems fairly unlikely we know that it spreads rapidly and becomes a local epidemic that would be hard to miss. Eric. What do you think will be the biggest impact on healthcare beyond the front lines of the pandemic? This is a huge problem for healthcare right now. In areas like New York City and Northern Italy we've seen institutions that are unable to cope with the volume of patients and don't forget about people with other diseases, pregnant women and kids who need routine vaccines. We are not prepared and there will be a lasting impact. Eric. Hazel what do you think is the biggest concern surrounding the misinformation of the coronavirus? Infection rates, mortality rates, susceptibility? If you could say, where do you find the majority of this information needing to be fact checked coming from? I'd say the biggest concern, which we've seen manifest in lots of different forms, is the misinformation that claims COVID-19 is less deadly than regular flu and that all emergency measures are overblown. Often misinfo of this kind includes allegations of political conspiracy and suggestions that authorities are using this virus to gain control over their citizens. Calculating mortality rates during a disease epidemic is difficult, in part because the numbers of deaths and patients constantly change. But on March 11th, Dr. Anthony Fauci stated that it is 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. Hazel. How are you? A little hungry right now in some ways I'm fortunate. COVID-19 is keeping me far too busy to get bored or go too stir crazy, but, like all of us, I'm at risk of getting infected, and since I go to the hospital to see patients, maybe a little more risk than many, but thank you for asking. Eric. How should I think about any large public gatherings in the future? It feels like, unless the virus is 100% eradicated, it will be tough to have large events in the next few years, especially if the virus is cyclical. What will happen entirely depends on what we do and whether external effects, like the weather, actually make any difference. But this will end, and likely before a few years. Large gatherings will be possible, but we don't know when. Eric. I'm 68 years old and have had the two-year course of pneumonia vaccine. Does this offer at least some protection against pneumonia from COVID-19? Unfortunately, the vaccine that many people receive for pneumonia is directed against a very different kind of microorganism, a bacterium, not a virus it almost certainly has little or no effect. Eric. Is it true that COVID-19 can stay in the air for a couple of hours? So for example if someone sneezes the virus will distribute in the air and will stay there for a couple of hours? One study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that at least some of the virus particles from a simulated sneeze or cough stayed in the air for at least 3 hours. But the researchers stopped measuring at 3 hours, so it's possible some virus particles are still in the air after that. Nancy. Any update on promising vaccines? Is a 14 to 18 month timeline still realistic considering the extraordinary circumstances here? That is our expedited testing and approvals being considered by governing bodies? With vaccines or drugs, the one thing you don't want to do is rush to make a lot of something, only to find out it doesn't work. Christine. Is it possible to be infected by those quarantining if you live in a building with central air conditioning slash heating? Regarding potential transmission via central air conditioning systems in large buildings, the Federation of European Heating, Ventilation and Air Conditioning Associations recently issued guidelines for building managers. They say heating and cooling systems can be operated normally as there are no direct implications on COVID-19 spread. They also advise opening windows to get as much outside air as reasonably possible. The full document is here. Nancy. Does Pine Sol work for a proper disinfectant? Can't find bleach, rubbing alcohol, Clorox wipes or Lysol spray. Almost any disinfectant should work along with plain old soap. Eric. Is it true that blood pressure medications may increase the severity of COVID-19 in those that become infected? I think that there is little compelling evidence that blood pressure medications change susceptibility to infection or severe disease the data out there are a bit contradictory, but controlling your blood pressure is important and most blood pressure medications aren't a worry at all. I'd stick with what you're on, as long as it's working. Eric. 
given how many young and even relatively healthy people have not just been infected, but killed by COVID-19, it seems like that this mostly strikes older adults messaging really should be changed and everyone needs to view this as a far greater threat. Would you agree? I agree with the idea that this remains a threat to young people as well as old. While the death rate is far lower in those who are younger, it's still real and far higher than almost any other common infection. Eric. Do you have any tips for maintaining our mental health during this time? I spend my time coming up with new Zoom virtual backgrounds. Seriously, it's tough to be locked down and worried at the same time. Get outside if you can, exercise, play with the dog, and make sure that you set aside time for yourself. Eric. What age is the youngest slash oldest confirmed infected slash death due to COVID-19 worldwide slash in USA? There have been all ages infected, from newborns to the elderly, and there have been survivors at all ages. Eric. Why has this been treated so extremely, while other viruses, like swine flu or bird flu, we essentially left unchecked? Is COVID-19 that much more dangerous? H5N1 and other avian flu strains are not left unchecked, they are monitored very very closely at all times. To avoid this kind of scenario, the 2009 H1N1 was not really a completely novel virus, versions of H1N1 have been infecting people since 1918. As a result, primarily younger people were vulnerable to the 2009 virus. It's possible that SARS-CoV-2 was missed, in part, because it wasn't a flu virus and the original SARS virus was contained after infecting 8,000 people and killing 800 of them. So coronaviruses may have been underestimated as a threat. Christine. I've seen several news sources claim experts from Johns Hopkins and other medical colleges are saying the virus can become less deadly as it spreads. Can you explain this phenomenon? Is it because the deadlier strains of the virus kill the patient faster and are thus less likely to spread than the less deadly strain? Or is it something else entirely? A virus idea of success is spreading to as many hosts as possible, and making as many copies of itself as possible. So yes, one theory for why many viruses evolve to be weaker over time is that viruses that kill their host don't get very far. This pattern of weakening is seen with flu viruses and many others, but not all. Edit to add, we are not there yet with the current outbreak. Whether it's weaker 3 or 10 years from now doesn't change anything about today's situation. Christine. Will hot weather make this virus disappear? The virus probably won't disappear in hot weather. Singapore is practically on the equator, and the average temp there rarely goes below 75 degrees Fahrenheit and the virus circulated there. Christine.